Usman, in your capacity as IFRI's Africa Director, you participated recently in the AFC meeting in Washington, beginning of February. You were a presenter on the perspective of the AFC partner countries. I would believe that you were looking at CADEP and regional entities in terms of capacities to increase food security in Africa. Coming to my first question, AFC contained the promise that donors would help with developing and implementing local food security strategies, including financial commitments and commitments for technical assistance. In your view, how well are the donors doing with delivering on their commitments and how well has AFSI responded to the latest developments? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, but also, before that, thank you for the opportunity to discuss this with you, which is a very, very important item uh, right now. Let me start by saying that the most important contribution AFSI made to the African agenda is embracing of the principle of supporting a country-owned and a country-led process, aligning with the core principles of credit of country ownership and leadership, the accountability, mutual accountability, and coordination of efforts, and the comprehensiveness of the agenda of credit. So re-emphasizing that Aligning with it and supporting it was a good way of showing to the Africans that the global community listened and understood where they wanted to go with CADEC and stood ready to support it. That was more important than anything else that will follow. But of course, we do know that uh, the agenda of CADEC is uh, ambitious. We do know that CADEP is coming after several decades of neglect of agriculture. There's a lot of catching up in terms of investments, but also CADEP is coming at a time when there is a great open promise in the horizon in terms of what Africa can achieve based on the expense of the last 10, 15 years. So the uh, uh, African countries, the global community is responding to CADEP. Uh, the promise that we made in Lakila the commitment to invest uh, in food tickets and agriculture in a predictable way, I think, is being met, uh, starting with uh, the effort to align with the agenda, all the way to the establishment of the global agriculture and food security program. Okay, building on to that, um, do you think that AFSI evolved from what was originally the L'Aquila initiative, and how? Uh, I think what AFSI is doing is trying to pursue that initiative. What you have in the declaration is what the countries are trying to uh, put in place. Uh, they have been helped by the citizen countries responding positively. If you look at uh, countries outside of Africa, for example, they are embracing the kind uh, uh, of principles and the kind uh, of processes of consultative processes, evidence-based planning, of uh, review processes, investment planning, and so on and so forth. So uh, I think what the global donor community is doing right now is to make sure that they're serious about advocacy, they're serious about the decision that have made. Uh, it's true that the funding has not gone as quickly as they had uh, uh, wanted, but it's making some good progress. Uh, the Global Agriculture Input Security Program is going to have close to a billion dollars already uh, in terms of commitments. And then a good chance of it has already been dispersed, uh, close to 600 million, uh, maybe 6% of that goes to African countries. So I think that they're following through. I also think that uh, they're going beyond the declaration by trying to demonstrate that they are meeting their financial and non-financial commitments, trying to track and report against it, which I think is quite refreshing and innovative, at least judging by the experience of the past and uh, how the global community has tried to hold itself accountable. I think they have stepped a little bit beyond just making a statement, uh, mobilizing resources, but also committing themselves to demonstrating that they are living up to the commitments, which I think is good. Mm -hmm. 
Now, a little bit further on, on the progress in terms of the meeting progress, I believe that the meeting in Washington has been viewed as successful. Now, from your perspective, how are the results going to be fed in the upcoming meeting in Chicago in terms of uh, progress from one meeting to the next? Do we see a, a, a continuation? Are things going to get more concrete and so forth? Now, uh, I didn't attend the full uh, uh, two days meeting. I did make a presentation on CADEP, but I also did help host and uh, call it a workshop one day before that was an input into the uh, uh, proper RFC meetings uh, on February 2nd and 3rd. So the workshop I helped host and call it was on February 1st. And there, the discussion was about how do we go about demonstrating that the global community, the African member countries, are living up to their, um, to their commitments. The uh, efforts being led by Germany, uh, but also associating uh, the UK, Canada, OECD, Senegal, and Ghana as recipient countries, that effort uh, is uh, going to cover the rest of the year, trying to uh, look at a couple of case study countries and uh, basically document how AFSI is being helpful to these countries, how the financial and non-financial commitments are being managed, the extent to which they're contributing to progress in the countries and the kinds of results that are being achieved. Now, what I do understand is that uh, the uh, reporting on uh, progress and managing for development results at the G8 meeting, the reporting is going to be based on the AFSI report uh, that uh, we've been discussing on February 1st. So basically, it's agriculture and food security report that is going to be feeding in the, into the broader G8 agenda. My understanding is that the AFSI report uh, demonstrating uh, management for development results is going to be an input at the G8 meeting to demonstrate how the G8 are being responsive to the challenge of uh, development in the developing countries and how they're working together in partnership with developing countries to make sure we make progress towards the Millennium Development Goals, that we meet funding needs for growth, <coughs> that we are fight poverty and put in security and so on and so forth. Okay, to just wrap this off in one go, what do you think in terms of this process? What is the single most important thing that needs to be done now? I think they should stay the course. Uh, after the end, the commitment was a three-year commitment, 2009 to 12. <clears throat> I think that uh, we all understood that the challenge wasn't going to be solved in those three years. But the three years were going to be used to demonstrate the firm commitment uh, to work together uh, in the long run, in a predictable fashion, in a comprehensive and substantive fashion to solve the issues of hunger and food insecurity. So we will have demonstrated that by the end of 2012, but AFSI and what it tries to achieve should have a life beyond 2012. I think that is important. I also think it is important that the principles of AFSI be reinforced and be broadened uh, to the global development assistance uh, strategies and others in general, uh, aligning with country processes, uh, country leadership of ownership, challenging countries to take ownership and leadership, mutual accountability, asking for results. There are a lot of ingredients that are coming with AFSI that I think would be very important to keep and to nurture as we move into the rest of uh, the time we have until 2015, when we take stuff about uh, the MDG uh, commitment, but also beyond, because there are countries that will still be uh, behind in terms of meeting the MDG goals, perhaps not too far behind it, some might, some may not, but I think this commitment needs to be sustained and CAPSI is a real, it's a good blueprint, I would say. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Pascal.